and a warm welcome back to you. Well, building bridges of peace and understanding. It's a mission of one man working to bring educational opportunities to the children of Pakistan and Afghanistan. Greg Mortensen's journey began a decade ago when a failed attempt to scale one of Pakistan's famed peaks left him physically exhausted. Nursed back to hell by Islamic mountain dwellers, Mortensen decided to do what few Western eco-tourists have ever done, give something back. And in the past decade, the Central Asia Institute has set up dozens of schools in a remote part of the world where his native United States is often hated. And in a time when terrorism sets the tone of international debate, the group is finding human alternatives that are at once more direct, hands-on and cost-effective. Greg Mortensen joins us now from Washington. A most inspirational story. It, it certainly is an honor to have you here on World News. Can you tell us, we, we've heard the inspiration, although unusual that you then took that extra step and decided that you would do this for the children of Afghanistan and Pakistan. How difficult has it been to actually set this up? It took several years, and I, I tell people to do business there, it takes three cups of tea. The first, you're a stranger. Second, a guest. And the third, you become family. We have uh, shock and awe, two-minute football drills, and 30-minute power lunches here, but it's taken several years um, working with the Islamic leaders, the government, the military, and more recently in Afghanistan with the different uh, tribal factions. So it's been a very fascinating process. And what about getting the money to do this? How on earth have you come by the needed funds? I started out, I came back to the States after K2 in 93, I wrote 580 letters to celebrities and movie stars. I only got one check back for $100. I wrote 16 grants. They were all turned down. And finally, went to my mother's school, where elementary school, they, kids started a pennies for Pakistan Drive, and they raised 62,340 pennies. And that, and that was the inspiration for the dollars to come. But it really was children who reached out to children over there first. Now, of course, you've been doing this for some 10 years now. So uh, this was when Taliban were actually in power. In Afghanistan, there wouldn't have been many girls attending your schools at that point. Uh, well, in fact, there was uh, schools. They were pri held privately in the houses, and it was uh, very discreet but not overtly public. And I found in dealing with in, in many different tribal groups with Sunnis and Shias that there's a fierce desire to have education. And uh, several studies have shown if you can educate a girl to at least a fifth grade level, one, it reduces infant mortality, two, uh, decrease the population explosion, but basically the indices of health and life improve significantly. You can hand out condoms, you can build roads, you can put electricity, or you can drop bombs, but until the girls are educated, the society really won't change. And tell us, what, what's maybe the most inspirational story that you've had of, of a girl receiving education and what she's done with that education? A girl named Jahan, who I met ten years ago after K2. This is a dusty uh, uh, schoolyard outdoors, 80 children sitting in the dirt, riding with sticks in the dirt. And she told me, I want to become a doctor someday. Will you help? And last fall, which is nine years later, Jahan came up to me and asked me for $400 for tuition for maternal health care training. And um, to me, that was very inspirational. But not only that, she handed me a proposal written in English. And if you knew Jahan, uh, her mother died giving birth to her. So now she's broken that cycle, and she'll go back and provide health care in her village. And to me, that's been the most inspiring thing that's happened to me in 10 years. That is. That's an incredible story. What about teachers? How do you lure teachers over to Afghanistan and Pakistan to provide... All our teachers are local. Uh, often they don't have the uh, you know, fifth or eighth grade education level, so we put a tremendous effort into upgrading their skills with teacher training. And you find that if you have a local teacher, and especially a woman for girls, that will significantly improve the, um, the quality of the education. And, and unfortunately, there's a criteria set up by a lot of larger organizations that that uh, prohibit these kind of teachers so I would say we're trying to go as local as possible and presumably it gets easier as the years pass by but what sort of resistance have you encountered um, I have very little resistance um, initially I had some trouble with some mullahs uh, we sent a letter to uh, the council of ayatollahs in Qom, Iran we got a letter back which said that in the Holy Quran that in education is is encouraged for both boys and girls 
and furthermore, that what, what I'm doing as a non-believer, a person of the book, Kitab, but I'm an infidel, that it's in the highest principles of Islam. And, and as we go about this, um, you know, this critical period when it's a pivotal point in world history, we need to remember that the great majority of, of Muslims, the moderate majority, their greatest allies in that area of fragmented peace, and, and we need to listen to them more and understand the, the situation that they're in themselves. Greg Mortensen, it's a wonderful story. Thanks for talking with us. Thanks, Rosemary. And World News continues after this short break. Don't go away. Thank you.